She won most talkative in high school, and she has been running her mouth ever since. Welcome to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with your host, Lisa Fisher. Well, I want to hear all about your story, Miss Betsy. There you are in Michigan where the weather's much cooler and we're in a very hot pattern in Arkansas, but you are a successful intermittent faster. So tell me how you get started, how you, when you got started yeah. and how you got started. Oh yeah. I started dieting when I was in the eighth grade and thought I was fat at 135, but um, oh. yeah, isn't that awful? So my whole life's been dieting and it was, um, January of 2020 that I started to, uh, think about losing some weight. I, um, I had, I was diagnosed with COPD about eight years ago and, uh, that concerned me. And I thought, boy, if I lose a lot of weight, that's going to help a lot with my breathing. Um, it helps with a lot more than that. So, um, in fact, I don't think I even have COPD anymore. Wow. Yeah. That's the biggest uh, victory of the whole thing. So, so I lost about six pounds in Florida doing my husband and I usually eat something called whole 30, which is, you know, you're probably familiar with it. Um, pretty healthy eating and, and, um, you know, that's how we did it. I lost about six pounds in two months. Went home and I was scheduled for a colonoscopy (laughs) and uh, the colonoscopy preparation, as you know, is really fun Um, or you may not know yet. No, I know. I'm going back in two weeks. Okay. That's how much I know about it. Right. And, Mm -hmm. And just the process of that and being completely cleaned out for probably almost three days, um, I felt so good. I felt so good. That was in June of 2020. And um, I decided right there to start researching fasting because I knew I had to eat, you know, but I didn't know how to get that fasting benefit in a healthy way. So, yeah. Tell me, though, what spawned the word fasting in your mind just from that clean out because it's an elimination, but you're still drinking liquid or kind of, you can have apple juice or whatever during the clean out. So what made you make the connection that that may be close to fasting? Yeah. I think I had um, a certain color of popsicles I could have, but yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but the word fasting is used in it. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. So that's, that's really why it was that simple. And I just knew how good I felt. I was like, I don't want to eat again. <laughs> it's just, isn't that something that food bogs us down? Yes. And it, and it did, I wasn't clearing my throat and coughing. I wasn't, I just felt lighter and, and happier and clearer. So I started to research. And the first thing I stumbled on was uh, Dr. Jason Fung um, on YouTube, which was, you know, free for the asking. They were little weird recordings because he, it's just a picture of him and he talks. <laughs> He's not fancy. Yeah. You know, it's it's not um, central casting and, you know, beautiful backdrop. He's in front of a white wall. Exactly. And, and, and he's a scientist, though, but there is a purity about his approach that or, or an authenticity about his approach that you think this guy's for real. He's not selling me anything. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing for sale here even. Right. You know, which was my first, you know, there were so many factors, but that, uh, my husband and I both watched him. Um, my husband really didn't have a lot of weight to lose. I was at about, at that point I was about 186. I'd been over 190 at the beginning of the year. Um, so we really started just kind of a 16, eight kind of having a brunch and a dinner. Okay. Okay. And we're always, we've always been active, very active. I'm a cyclist. We do long distance touring. I rode my bike yesterday, 26 miles. I have, you know, it's an e-bike now. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is very interesting. People are, have yeah. such misconceptions about e-bikes. I know. I thought you just, pl- I, I didn't think you were pedaling. Yeah. But no, th- there's still, there's still exercise exertion involved. Yeah. Now, wait a minute, go back, Betsy. When you weighed 190 pounds, were you still very active? Yes. Yeah. I was very active. I tried every diet all my life. I dieted my entire life. 
Uh, the only time I got close to getting to 150 was with Adkins years ago. Yeah. The others, Weight Watchers, I used to cry. I mean, I used to literally get to the scale and cry because I was very disciplined. I mean, I if I've had one thing in my life, it's dietary discipline. <laughs> and it would just break my heart. So, you know, this... I don't know what, it, I mean, there, obviously it's chemistry, it's body, it's all those things, but the, the methodology of just IF, no matter what you eat, seems to have a big effect, a, a huge effect. We, you know, there are those side-by-side -side rat studies and Dr. Fung even talks about it. People who eat the same amount of calories, and I put that in air quotes because that is a very uh, misleading measurement. Yeah. Um, of energy, but he said eating the same calories, the rats that ate them in a six hour window. And I can't remember if that's exactly it mm -hmm. lost weight, it, even though it's the exact calories that the rats ate. In yes. it, and then if they ate in a 12 hour window, yes. so there is something to it. And you're also showing us Betsy that there are a lot of fat people on the treadmill at the workout oh, facility. I used to clock because I used to, you know, I've always had a watch for exercise. 15 years ago, I used to clock about 1,500 calories in a day working out. Wow. Wow. You know, so I, and I was at running at a deficit half the time. Um, and it wasn't helping no. you. And it wasn't healthy. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's, this feels right. This feels balanced. I have a lot of energy. I just went to my uh, Qigong class this morning on the beach. That was awesome. But I feel 20 years younger. I feel 20. I bet you look 20 years younger from what you did look. Well, you know, I don't know. It's the feel to me and the health yeah. that are yeah. the most important things. And yes, people say that I do. So I guess yeah. I do. Um, cause there's something about autophagy that helps with that, you know, cell turnover yes. and the other things producing more human growth hormone yeah. as an intermittent faster. My hair. That, it just keeps growing uh, and it's thick and my, you know, my eyelashes are thicker than they were. I mean, just little weird, insane? little weird things that, you know, like my skin is, is, I mean, obviously I'm 70 years old, so I'm going to have a few wrinkles. You are 70. You are beautiful. Oh, thanks. I'm, yeah, I'm 70. Oh, I had no idea. I'll be 71 in two uh, months. Only, okay. The only reason I thought maybe you, you're over 50 is because your hair is silver. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I would have next. So you do look 20 years younger. I was yeah. just using that as a number. Thanks. You really do. You look amazing. So you didn't have your aha moment with weight loss until you were seven, almost 70. Right. I didn't find what worked until that. Isn't fine. that, that is so encouraging for anyone listening. Oh, it's who huge. Thinks, well, who, who want to hang it up and think, forget it. I'm too old. I'm never going to change. No, no. Oh, well, you yeah. completely changed. Yeah. I mean, I, I literally, I cross country ski. I walk four or five miles a day. <laughs> I, I'm, and I do it because I love it. So there's an important yeah. thing. Find right. activities that you absolutely love that you could do every day. Um, and then I have my husband who does all of it with me. So that's a big factor too. That's a sweet story. Yeah. How long have you all been married? Uh, it'll be 30 years next year. So we just had our 29th That's anniversary. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Now tell me, what was your total weight loss, Betsy, with intermittent fasting? You know, between 55 and 60 pounds. Gosh. Yeah, I'm not. I, I mean, literally, I weigh what I did in the eighth grade now. Oh my! And that's what, goodness. And I'm the same height. So I reached oh. five five in the fifth grade. Um. Yeah. And <laughs> so yeah, I'm the same. And I thought I was fat. <laughs> that's what drives me Isn't crazy. That crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And the and the diet culture and the diet brain. Yeah. They are guys, they're bad for you. Don't, please don't listen. Don't think you have to, don't drink the Coke Zero. Yeah. You know? It's so interesting. Just don't. I, I look at, um, I think about the, the, uh, the first time I put this on Facebook, cause I, and I'm very careful. Um, someone said, 
you know, that's dangerous talk for people who are have disordered eating. And my, I thought about it for a while because I know that's true. I mean, I know people have to understand themselves to do this and to know what the limits are, not, you know, just what their limits are. But then I realized, and I went to my doctor for my annual physical, and he said, oh, thank God you're doing this. He said, I've got like five or six patients right now who were diabetic, who are off their meds completely. I'm not diabetic. I'm lucky, but but he's a huge advocate and that helps, you know. That does help a lot. Yeah. And so he... And so what I thought about was how many millions of people we have who are diabetic. It's in, in, in terms of numbers, I know that disordered eating is a huge issue for some, but the numbers of diabetic people who are subject to so many awful things um, is much bigger. So Much, much bigger. So I, I try to figure out how to do it in a way that people don't find offensive um, but that people are inspired. Well, you're not by. telling people, well, you're not condemning people for not doing it. Right. No, you're, you're just saying, this is what worked for me. Do, I, I don't like that, um, influence or virtue signaling. Someone is trying to get you to not tell your truth because it may offend somebody. Then what's social media? I mean, our social <laughs> media is for us to tell I mean, it's really to tell our successes and, and if we're candid to tell, um, those dark days as well, yeah, yeah. but that means if, if we have to look at social media as, oh my gosh, um, someone may be offended, then I can't post the chocolate cake that I had made for my granddaughter because somebody who does have an eating disorder is oh, it's going to trigger, or I can't, right. I can't go to the beach because somebody may have been bit by a squid yeah. Uh, yeah. in the water. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I mean, you, That's you, a good... it, it never ends. It just never ends. If you live your life like that, right? you living your truth is what made me reach out to you because it was so inspiring. Thanks. And and that's what worked for me. That's how I found out about it. Right. So it was a, it was actually a, a an app called do fasting and it's, Oh yeah. It's the do fasting, uh, mm-hmm conversation group on Facebook um, that I find really interesting. Now I'm in one that's a fung combination of fung and, and um, uh, Megan Ramos and AF, Ramos which or... is the alcohol free oh. movement. Oh, um, but yeah. Oh, AF means something different now. So I'm glad to know it means alcohol free. Yeah. Um, tell me then what made you decide to go? Cause you are alcohol free. Yes, it sounds like. Yeah. What, what made you decide to do that? Well, um, that was more, well, I'll tell you the truth. I, a relative in our family had a baby, a very heavy, big baby. They're both very tall. So this baby was sweet and I wanted to hold him and I went to hold him and, and I thought, man, I've had three glasses of wine. I, I should not be holding this baby. That was my moment. You know, I'd had lots of moments like waking up at 3.30 in the morning and going, darn it, why did I drink that wine? Um, But I drink a lot of wine. And my friends are now finding out. I mean, I don't think people even knew how much wine we drank as a couple. Um, We were often three bottles a night between us. So so now I have this. And plus the money saving thing is all for vacation. I was going to (laughs) say. Uh, I mean, you guys are rich. Yeah. <laughs> like, no Saving lunch, on no food. breakfast, <laughs> right. and no wine. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Boy, doesn't it feel better? Uh, I, I, the longer I go without alcohol, the better I feel. Yes. It's, it's now I, I'm kind of, and I was reading that. So you are too. Age has something. Well, not completely. Yeah. Because I, I, I had, um, I'm trying to think, I think a week ago I might've had a bubbles. So you can something. do that. I don't even drink yeah, it all. That's good. Yeah. I, I don't even care because you know what? I don't feel well afterwards. And that's what I was reading. It said, as we age, our tolerance lowers because of dehydration, uh, hormonal imbalances, all these yes, different things. Yeah. So it's really, it's just not enjoyable. And I also say, cause people ask me all the time, because I coach people, can I drink alcohol when I intermittent fast? I go, yes, you can, but you're going to see your body only holds this much food and consumption, things that are consumable, you know, food and drink. 
and I'd rather chew my calories than sip them because it makes me full. And then I can't have the steak that I prepared. And put or, something good in your body. And put something good in your body. Because you only have so, a limited. But, <laughs> but I did, uh, to be I, honest, the intermittent fasting was not terribly impacted by my wine drinking. I have to be very honest about that. I, I Since I quit, it was January 1st of this year. I had I made my goal last June and I've maintained it. Um, the alcohol didn't seem to make, or lack of it didn't seem to make a difference, really? which I have no idea. That's Again, that's that chemistry, yes. different folks, different strokes kind of thing. That's right. That's right. Um, that's just right. like the old, you know, I, I talk about this a lot because I grew up with this. I, I was in Battle Creek, you know, when I grew up and we had cereal for breakfast and right. I, you know, all my life breakfast was the most important meal. Uh-huh. And, um, the other thing is calories in calories out. That's the one that used to punch me in the gut. I mean, literally when people would say that, that would punch me in the gut because it's not true. I knew it wasn't true, but it still hurt. It was like, well, then I'm, then this is impossible. I mean, if that's the case and I'm working out 1200 calories a day and I'm eating 1500 you know, Golly. so, so those kinds of things are so much more damaging than me talking about intermittent fasting being good. Exactly. You know, and you, and you know, Betsy, it's all, it's really offensive for a healthcare provider to patronize a patient by saying you need to eat less and move more. Oh yeah. Oh God. Because it's horrible. if, if it were math, we'd all be our fifth, seventh grade weight or whatever our ninth grade weight was, because we all can do the math because the back of the box that has the calories that, because we were, that is also promoting processed foods Mm -hmm. because processed foods have calories Mm -hmm. because the steak you get and the chicken that you buy at the grocery store and the vegetables don't have a calorie count. Yeah. That's interesting. They don't. So, and, and Dr. Fung is kind of, and Dr. Bickman who wrote why we get sick kind of they both kind of reference that, that it's really the processed food industry that has promoted a calories in calories out. Cause then you have to buy their box yeah. of granola bars to see how much it Interesting. is. Interesting. I but never thought about that. Yeah. 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 Because real foods and plus Dr. Funk says this real foods affect our satiety controls differently than packaged foods and as he says, process, cause he's from Kenya, yeah. the processed foods, but real foods trigger, um, leptin, yes. which tells you you're yes. satisfied. Yeah. And he always talks about cholecystokinin mm-hmm. and peptide. Why, why, wow, you can why, remember why, why, all peptide, the words. Whichever I, one it is. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I've been, well, I just gave a speech on it last week to healthcare providers. Oh, good for you. Um, yeah to people in the medical community. So I had to brush up on some of the science. Yeah. And that's that's when I started realizing, and there was an aha moment for everybody in that room and the people watching on the Zoom call that went, wow, we've been duped. And one of the dupes you just mentioned was that, you know, Battle Creek, Michigan, it was that home of Kellogg's? Yes. Okay. So Dr. Kellogg was the one who invented the phrase, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Wonder why? Yes. What, were, what were his interests? Yes. I mean, follow the money is what I like to say. Well, it's like the Dairy so, Association. Their, you know, their big thing was that you had to have four glasses of milk a day back in the food yeah. groups world, you know, those were all. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, you have to be, you just, you have to be your own scientist. You have right. to do your own research and really understand, get to know your body, be friends with it. Get to know your body. Yeah. And, you know, um, Bert Herring is the physician who wrote the Fast Five Diet in 2005. So he was early, early in this. Oh, that I haven't heard the of. communication. I'm surprised mm-hmm. I didn't. Yes. Oh, it's fast, huh? fascinating. And he's an MD. And then he also wrote uh, the book, AC Appetite Correction. Hmm. And he talks about the what happens, kind of like the leptin and the signals. He said the apostat is uh, in the part of the brain that tells you you're full. Yes. And he's, he's, he says you don't reach it until you've lived a, a five-hour eating window type of paradigm. Yeah. So, which I, I think is very, very interesting that 
um, he really thinks five hours is a sweet spot hmm. with a feasting and fasting schedule. So what it, and, and again, he wrote that in 2005 yeah. before wow. um, Dr. Michael Mosley uh, was on the BBC that talked about uh, fasting and then Dr. Fung, those are kind of other thought mm-hmm. leaders in the medical community. So w- what is your sweet spot, Betsy, for your yeah, I'd, feasting I'd and say fasting? We do 24 so we do a four hour eating window most commonly. And one yeah. interesting sidelight, I, I can tell that things have been reset in me because we went to Portugal for three weeks. We ended up being five because we got COVID and we couldn't come home. They wouldn't let us come home. Um, well, nothing says welcome to Portugal quite like a COVID diagnosis. Yeah. So you got to stay in paradise. Two no, more it wasn't weeks. too bad. So. Yeah. But but what was interesting is that I was worried because I was I didn't have a scale, you know I wasn't the, I was out there we were having breakfast every day because our hotels yeah. serve a wonderful yeah. smorgasbord, and we had dinner and I even had dessert I'm not much even of a sweet tooth but I'm in Portugal you know right I mean avoiding the wine was hard enough <laughs> so right for sure so we got home and I had only gained three pounds after five weeks of eating. In, off the, off the scale. Okay. And because you typically follow a whole 30 diet, wouldn't you guess that those three pounds were just inflammation? Uh, yes. I would say definitely water retention and inflammation because it only took me two days to get them off. Then you didn't gain weight. You just hadn't pooped right. yet. Yeah. <laughs> or I hadn't, yeah. Or, or I just, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, didn't have enough water because you know when you're traveling, you end up. Oh yeah. Well, you need you get dehydrated flying, and then you don't drink as much water because you don't want to get up on the plane ten and times. And you don't know and where the bathrooms everybody. are when you're. At, we were on a bicycle. And you trip. don't know where the bathrooms so, are. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. so you exercise then even in Portugal, you did well, all your athletic endeavors. Um, only for a week. One week we were on a river cruise where we got three meals a day and snacks. So that one, what was that like? I haven't done that in well, years. Well, I'll tell you what, I think it's one of the best ways to travel because good, you good, it's good, a good. slow boat. You ha- you get to in- unpack for seven days good, and go to different good. cities all the, the good, whole time. That's awesome. So I've done it. This is my third one. Um, I highly recommend it. But but the food is plentiful, <laughs> just like on Did Andy it Cruz. feel weird? Did it feel weird having something called breakfast? It did. It felt a little scary, <laughs> actually. I know. But I did it without any, with abandon. When I, so that's the other thing I've learned is I make conscious choices, you know, and yeah. I know the consequences and it's fine. Like we're right today, we're on a, we're getting ready for the July 4th weekend. So we're on a 45 yeah. hour fast right now. Oh. So we kind of prep ahead of time. And then if we get way off kilter, because we'll have company here. We live on the lake. We're, we'll have company till the 16th of July. And I always tell my company, no breakfast and lunch. You're on your own. Right. Um, right. You know, no, we don't mind if other people drink. They can drink all they want. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's just kind of, it's one of those things where you just kind of automatically, Eric and I, my husband, will talk about it and say, yeah, we're not going to, we're, we're going to fast. We've never fasted more than 45 hours. I would like to try. I think it'd be very interesting, but. Well, let's talk about your lab work because at your age, Mm -hmm. um, you have doctors that are probably breathing down your neck. You need to have lab work. You need to do all these things. It's got to be, it's got to be pristine, but like, what is your fasting insulin? Do you know? Oh, I think it was 76. No, that's glucose. Oh, see, that's so what I people get know. confused. But th- but that's great, right? But if it's seventy six, then you're doing fine. But Doctor Bickman says that your glucose can stay in range. But see, you're an intermittent faster, so he's not talking to you. But your glucose can be in range, yet your fasting insulin tells the real picture. Um, I don't know that you, I even have that it, test. You may not. And when you do, you're going to blow them away because yours is going to be like mine is so low. My healthcare provider's never seen it that oh, low. Oh wow. Um, but she's not worried about it because I, I mean, I, I, I do about 20 and four yeah. and then I, I'm metabolically flexible. So on weekends, sometimes I do eat two meals if we're, we've got people here, I mean, yeah. God, you know, it changes. And then I have a 24 hour fast, all those things like everybody else. Um, but with that, 
fasting insulin is a real predictor, he says, of metabolic health and oh, uh, I'll ask know, for 88% that next of the time. population. Yeah, you have to ask for it. So that's why I was just kind of wondering. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. But blood glucose is something to know, but it's, he says the fasting insulin has the 10 to 20 year predictability of your future health of cancer, dementia, type 2 diabetes. Yeah. So I, my yes. numbers have not changed significantly. In fact, they just, they finally put me on a statin. But now I read in the last few weeks that you should go to a three meal a day, a couple of days prior to what? your fast for your blood test. Megan Ramos says Which that. I didn't do. So next time I'll try that. I I put off statins for years because I have very good uh, good cholesterol and always have. Then why did they The then total why did they just put got too high. And I have some other, I have an ascending aortic aneurysm. So oh. they're always kind of, I have low blood pressure, yeah. no blood pressure meds there. So Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. So, so Megan Ramos, who works uh, hand in hand with Dr. Fung right. at the Institute for Dietary Management, I think is what the IDM, I, for, I think that's what it's called. But she has, um, and, and you can Google it, her plan, she says before she goes for the best cholesterol reading, only do 14 hour fasts. Mm -hmm. That's the longest. And she goes, and then when you eat, eat a high ketogenic diet for three days. High good fat, so oh, okay. avocados, cream, yeah, steak. Yeah, I can do that. She, <laughs> if if you're not dairy intolerant, cheese, right? Yeah. Those things. Um, she says do that for three days, and she tweaked and tweaked and tweaked, and that's how she came to this conclusion. Said, and sure enough, people, everyone who's done that will say, "Gosh, it, it turned around my cholesterol numbers," and everybody backed off. You, you Which... do because yours has a little bit more to do with your anatomy you know, your heart and aortas and stuff yeah. like that, that, that may trump anything we're talking about, but well, there's genetics it's a, too a start that I think are at play, yes. but you know, and a reminder, this is not medical advice. My attorney <laughs> wanted me to tell you, okay, I have to do that. Oh, that's good. And same with me. Yeah. I just, <laughs> no. that's right. And, and truly anything we're talking about it's, and that, that's what I was going to say earlier. One thing, uh, uh, the man who wrote Appetite Correction, Dr. Bert Herring, says it's kind of a study of one. You know, what works for you may not work for even your own children right. or your twin Which sister. Which is so important for you know, people it's, along the way it's instead what works of the you. old platitudes, you know, the old. Right. So tell me about your husband's weight loss. Did he end up, did he end up losing weight? Oh, yeah. Weight? Yeah. He's, so he's 6'4". He can hold a lot. And he, Show he probably lost, I'm going to say 30 pounds, 35 pounds. So yeah, he's um, people. People accuse me of starving him, but no, he's he looks great. Um, That's yeah. Awesome. He wanted to get there. He's actually he gained more in in Portugal than I did. Um, so he's still working on getting some of that off. But he he's yeah. He's we're both very fit. We love to bike. We're you know. And oh, I wanted to say something that about e-bikes just because I get this chance. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. I. Yeah. I have a um, a drop handlebar e-bike, so it's like my old touring mm -hmm. bikes. I've biked all my life. Mm -hmm. We've biked all over the world. And um, I wear this Apple Watch, and Apple, mm -hmm. it, it, it <laughs> tracks my heart rate, and that's really all I care about. And I keep my heart rate at either aerobic or peak for about 80 minutes a day. When I ride my bike. Wow. So wow. it's, um, there's no question. And I go out no matter what. It can be very windy. It can be really hilly. It can be anything. And I still get that health benefit. Um, and it rides like butter. I mean, it's like, it makes me feel so powerful. <laughs> so, okay. Sometimes some engineers going to have to explain to me, and maybe you can, then how is it aerobic if it's an e-bike? I really thought it was like a self-driving car. Yeah, it's like a sensor thing that senses your pedaling, and um, and works with it. I and I don't. My husband is an engineer, and he he probably oh. understands it better than I do. But I just go by my heart yeah. rate. So that's insane. So you're still getting the workout. Yeah. In. Plus, we can ride together. <clears throat> He's just one motor click more than me. Or less than me. Right. So that works great oh. too. Because he used to have to go ahead and wait for me like every five miles. 
because mm-hmm. he likes to mm-hmm. ride. So, mm-hmm. so now we ride together. That's interesting. That's interesting. Now, did you get any? Do you have children? I do. Betsy? They're grown. Did, obviously. Did, okay. <laughs> did they? Did they give you any pushback though in trying to pursue, you know, an intermittent fasting lifestyle? Because a friend of mine right now is um, sixty years old, and her kids are pushing back because they're like. And she's divorced, so she doesn't have a husband who can say, listen, you're, she's fine. But she said, I'm by myself trying to defend the fact that I'm eating one meal That's a day and I'm fine. Yes. Um, I, I My family culture is different than a lot of family cultures. Um, I'm quite sure I will never live with my kids, um, would never want to, love them to death. Right. And, they, and they're programmed the same way. So, so we kind of, no, I, I'm way too independent. My Good. son could never tell me. Good. Now, my daughter, who, my daughter passed away in 2019. Oh, I'm so Yeah, sorry. of cancer. Oh. And she was very oh. into health and, and fitness, mountain climbing, biking, you name it, out in Colorado. Um, and I spent the last six months of her life with her. And- Oh, Betsy, my goodness. Yeah, and I don't think this would have made her happy because we have kind of, we've had a culture of disordered eating in my family. That's probably why I'm familiar with it. My, you know, my mother always, oh, I see. you know, disparaged yeah. my weight and and I probably talked about food way too much. So, yeah, but I, yeah, she, um, I think she's happy for me now. <laughs> I think she, more because of the health aspect of it. So she was what thirty. She was forty one when, um, when she died, oh, and she Betsy. she was alive for about five years after her diagnosis. But very rare, very aggressive cancer, mm. and a very uh, accomplished young woman who is greatly missed. Um, uh, by I'm sure, I, I I can't imagine the pain you've suffered, which is what's so crazy about your story, Betsy. That was in twenty nineteen, yes. our last good year on yeah. the planet, yeah. right? And it was a terrible year for yeah. her and terrible year for you. Cause you had six months watching this human yeah. suffer. Yeah. Then we went into the pandemic, which we all agree was just a crappy yes. year, rough year, two or three for everybody. And you lost 60, how many pounds did you say uh, total? 55 I say pounds? 60, but right now I'm 60 at 135. Pounds. So I, I, you know, you're fine. So yeah. So oh, I am. Let's say 60 pounds you lost after the two, well, the death of your daughter is the worst right, news right. any parent can get. And then collectively as a planet, we suffered. So we felt the burdens right. of each other, yet you lost 60 And pounds. I did it with joy. I mean, my daughter has, has conveyed very clearly to me all along since and before and since she's died. I feel it viscerally. It is something that I live for. And a lot of her talks were about, were around living. Um, so, so yeah, there's a park bench in Denver that has her quote on it. Um, is that yeah, right? She's a, she's what, where is dynamic that? woman in where City in Park. There's a, there's, okay. her name was Allie Gerkman. If anybody happens, someone actually sat on the bench and looked up her name and contacted one of her friends to say, thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah. So that's, beautiful. so it, it yeah. And I, yeah. um, I looked at COVID as an opportunity to get outside. We, we went in the cold when it was really cold here, we just decided to go away. We drove with our bikes on the back of the car and went to Texas for a month yeah. in 29, that was smart. 2020, 20, 2021. Yeah. Uh, so we spent November, February, and March away in warm climates so that we could ride our bikes outside and walk. That was smart. Yeah. And do you know how much that helped your mental health because of the sunlight? Totally. Um, totally. And the, the other things. Now, that's one thing. Michigan, you do have cold winters, but don't you have beautiful days where... Oh, um, gorgeous. don't you have a real beautiful spring and oh. summer there? We have actually a gorgeous winter. It's just that I only like about six weeks of it because we like to yeah. cross country yeah. ski and we do it as much as we possibly can. And then we're done. <laughs> so Betsy, nothing stops you. <laughs> it's fun. It, you are so inspiring. But we live in a condo, so I don't have to do anything. 
You know, we don't have to garden. We don't have to shovel. We don't have to do any of that stuff. You, but you still have to show up in cold weather. That's yeah. very challenging. Yeah. Cross country skiing is invigorating, just invigorating. So, oh, so another little piece of the story. Thank you for your compliments. I'm trying not. Well, it's I'm trying not to fish so for inspiring. more because they feel so good. I no, you're no. <laughs> I want to hear. <laughs> last one. June, last May, we were hiking in California, and I fell on a tree root. I tripped on a tree root and fell and Oof. broke my femur and had to get rushed oh, in no. emergency surgery. They oh, put no. in with that post and everything. And I'm that so was sorry. two months after I fell in Florida and broke my collarbone that healed in two weeks. The, the, the fracture healed. I don't even know. I went to the doctor, I think 10 days after they did the surgery and they were like, well, the bones all healed. In fact, you're growing more bone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, good. I'll take that. So I'm like back to normal activity. Totally. So would I, does Dr. Fung address that? I've heard Jen Stevens, who is the uh, fasting author, talk about bone regeneration <clears throat> and human growth hormone yeah, well, that benefit us. Do you think that's I what do. that was for I you, I think Betsy? all of this is, is good. And it's really just a schedule change, you know? Yeah. Plus you get, look how much well, more time you get. You're not like always yeah. planning oh, meals sure. and shopping no. for food. No, no, not thinking about it. The freedom. I think that was in the beginning. My first uh, benefit was not worrying, wondering, because when you are in a paradigm and I'm not really a calorie counter, but I, I was eating five or six meals a day because they told me I needed to, you know, I would wonder what's going to be my breakfast. What's going to be my snack. What's going to be my lunch. Mm -hmm. What's going to be my snack. And now uh, mine in 20 and four is kind of a meal and then maybe another, a snack. Yeah. Or, yeah. Know, that's what snack. ours is. If I need it. I'm yeah. I'm, I might not even need it. It just depends. And there are days that I don't eat enough. And then the next day my body taps me on the shoulder and says, uh, 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 get down there and eat some eggs and some bacon and some protein. Yeah. You know? Oh, you I sound yes, just sir. like me. Yes, yes, ma'am. You sound yeah. just like me. And, and and that's why, and what, what you said is something that um, I, I just had a, a intermittent fasting group last night and they said, well, Lisa, this week, one, one, of, one day the girl had two events where she had to eat. Uh, I've told her you don't have to eat if it's, if they serve you food there, nobody cares if you eat, but in the beginning, you don't know that you don't know you have the freedom to pass at a right. meal. And say no, th I'm good. I'll just drink my water and my tea. And I did say something, and you you're kind of compounding that by saying it. You know that you're going to have more eating over the weekend, so you're preparing your body for the extra fuel you're going to get by kind of emptying your tank really yes, well. Yeah, and doing a 45 hour fast. Yeah. And people and people, you know, there's some flexibility in it because people. Well, people say, "Oh, you want to meet for lunch?" and and now I'm like, yeah, you know, as long as we plan ahead, as long as we have like two days, yeah, you know, we're good yeah. with that. And then we'll fast until the next dinner on the next day. So it, it, you don't have to be fanatic about it. It you don't have to be obsessed with it. What made you decide to embark on the longer fast? How, how did you ease into it? Like, what are some tips that you can give? I others? would say first I did it because I had hit a plateau for a long period of time. And I was still in the weight loss part of my journey um, and it worked. So that was, and I'd read about it. I'd read about people doing it. Um, and uh, I, I told my husband, I said, you know, we're, we're doing it to the point that it's hard because 45 hours is harder than three days. Um, there's something about apparently that third day, which I've never <laughs> gone to that is supposed to be pretty easy. Um, but that it's not crazy? that hard if we decide it's so the conscious mind is so fascinating to me. If we decide the day before we're fine, we don't even like today. I'm not thinking about dinner. I'm not, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> Mindset. Mindset's everything. Yeah. So it's wild. Um, I I've seen people and I've done a few 40 hour fasts. And I didn't die. I mean, you know, right. but <clears throat> the hardest part I see on Fung's groups <clears throat> and some others is 
it's like hour 24 is the hardest. Mm-hmm. And then like hour 25, it's a roller coaster ride down. Interesting. Do you feel that way? I, I'm, What's your hardest hour? I am not. I think my hardest hour is the hour before I had scheduled to end. <laughs> okay. I mean, in terms of hunger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't. But I really, it's not been hard. That part of it is not a, it's my first lesson was what is hunger? You know, that was my very first lesson in fasting was, well, am I really hungry? No, I'm just bored or no, I just need to distract myself Mm -hmm. and gee, I'm going to go work on my jigsaw puzzle. You know, uh, it's, it's that. Then drink some more water. Yeah. So some of, yeah, the, the, yeah, it's my head's hungry, but my body really doesn't desire more need nutrition. Right. And, or I'll go for a walk. That's my favorite distraction is to get out and exercise, listen to a book, listen to a fasting book. When you say doctor, (laughs) that's right. I do it all the time. My new book I'm reading (laughs) is glucose revolution by the glucose goddess. Oh, interesting. She, she explains. "Mm -hmm." So a lot of the game we play is what our insulin does. And it's all about insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Um, What Mm -hmm. insulin does to, and it also goes back to the reason and Dr. Fung kind of insinuates this as well. Foods aren't fattening, but the insulin spike is what's fattening. Yes. So the insulin spike and then it, trying to bring the glucose down and then I'm sorry, the glucose spikes and then it dips. And so that's what causes the insulin um, reaction and the fact that you're insulin resistant. That's what makes the food fattening, not the amount of calories in it. Yeah. It's the foods you eat and what it does. So that's why a piece of cake Mm -hmm. causes these deep glucose and insulin spikes and dips. And you don't feel satiety on a piece of cake. But you do if you fried two eggs and had some butter, which are in the cake. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) (laughs) But if you pulled it apart and you had the whole foods from it. That would provide satiety, but the cake doesn't really provide satiety. That's why you can eat two pieces of cake at a birthday party. You don't because you don't want to embarrass yourself. Yeah. Oh, I think I... But you could. Yeah. Well, I know. We all have. Yeah. We've all overdone it. But my point is, that's why Dr. Fung always says, obesity isn't a caloric problem. It's a hormonal problem. Yes, I totally agree. And it's your grill and working with your leptin, working with your cholecystokine and working with your insulin, working with your cortisol, working with your thyroid. Those are a hormone, vitamin D. I mean, they're all hormones that communicate. And that was all new to me. I think it's new to everybody, yeah. Betsy. I think it is new to everybody. And that's why we're having to re-educate an entire generation of right. people who thought calories meant something. My words, you can't eat it. Or, uh, I don't eat at fast food restaurants. But if I went to one, I think the, I haven't been to one in years. I think the calories are on the wall of every McDonald's right. I've heard. I, I don't know. But that doesn't mean right. anything. What we need to know is what kind of insulin spike it causes and will it provide satiety? And the answer is high insulin spike, no right. satiety. Right. Good point. That's a very simple and good that's, way to put it. That's what we need yeah. to know. And so in Glucose Revolution, um, the adorable, um, I think she's a chemist. She might be a PhD chemist. She really knows her stuff. <laughs> she says that um, there, there's a method to eating to help prevent those glucose dips and spikes. Cause she said for her quote, for every glucose dip and spike, you have you're one step closer to a heart attack because heart attacks, cardiovascular disease is based on insulin resistance. Oh, wow. Dr. Hyman said that yesterday, uh, in a tweet, cardiovascular disease is based on insulin resistance. Mm. So think about that just a moment. So she says it's the order of the foods you eat. So start with something green because the fiber, how it helps the glucose, mitigate the glucose, then eat protein, then eat fat, then eat a carb, then eat your fruit and dessert. Never eat a carb, she says, naked. So don't eat fruit by itself. Mm -hmm. Eat it with a fat like heavy cream or a piece of cheese. Oh, I want to read this book. Yeah. It is fascinating. I listened to her read it. She is um, bilingual. She is from 
she's from France, so she has a little, but she's beautiful, beautiful English. But when she talks about the croissant, it makes me want to be in a pair of street. I was going to say, it makes me want to eat one. Yeah. Yes. But she says, eat it, but eat it. Never eat your carbs naked. And I've just never forgotten that. That's a great way to put it. It is because she said what we're trying to do is mitigate the glucose dips and spikes, which cause the weight gain because it causes insulin resistant. And Dr. Fung says, and Dr. Bickman, the more insulin resistant you are, the fatter you get. And the fatter you get, the more insulin resistant you get. Gotcha. That's the tilt a whirl we need to get off, not the yeah. calories. That's great. That's great. I'm going to read that yeah. book next. I'm a little passionate about oh, some it's of good. these things. Sorry. <laughs> well, so am I, obviously. And you don't want because you know, it, 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 I don't like to be evangelical about it, but I, I, I really believe in it, and and it worked for me when nothing else did. Right. Yeah. Clearly, for you, it, in your late sixties, right. you were getting back to your. I mean, less than your. Oh, your ninth grade, eighth, eighth grade. grade weight. You said, but. <laughs> Eighth grade weight. I mean, that is heroic yeah. is what it is. Oh, thanks. It is amazing in the way your hair looks and vibrant in every way. So it's really incredible. Um, so you'd already been through menopausal changes because that's another thing it helps people with are in there who are perimenopause and early postmenopausal are things like hot right. flashes. That for some reason that's all connected to and fat like fasting is this unicorn. Then I'm like, well, fasting will fix that too. A fasting will fix well, that too. Well, now they're saying, you know, what, one five day fast a year will reduce your chances of cancer significantly. I'm like, I wish they had come out earlier. Um, but uh, you know, because I had breast cancer also. Oh, yeah. you did. I, well, I'm I'm a I'm a rebel. So I, I will I have to say that ahead of time because back in college, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease through exploratory surgery and, uh, and, wow. and twice was in the hospital. Um, and I remember they told me I'd have to be on steroids my whole life. And I remember looking back at the doctor's office and thinking, nope, not a sick person. No, I don't. And I yeah, never had same. it again. And Mindset. Yeah. And then, and COPD, same thing. I had a doctor look me in the eye and say, you know, there's really, you can't reverse this. There's really nothing you can do. It will just continue to get worse. And I looked at him and I, I literally said, watch me. <laughs> I mean, I was, it's like, so when I have something Betsy. to prove. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Honey, you were hard to raise. <laughs> Your mother, your mother Rest was going, soul. oh, yeah. Betsy's out of the house. Good. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. No, it, it's, I, it's, it's just a refusal to allow it's someone a- else to tell me how I'm going to feel or what's going to happen to me. I, I don't <laughs> think they don't have any right. magic. You know, I have more magic yeah, right, right here. I don't either. I do too. So I do too. I, I, I say it all the time. I mean, I, I don't. I, I'm definitely not critical of the medical community. I'm just skeptical. Yeah, and it won't. And I'll I'll use so, them for a diagnosis um, if they want to make one. I, but it's it's like a I don't know. I'm just a I'm a child of the universe. <laughs> like, what year? How old were you when you were diagnosed with breast cancer? I was um, just menopausal. I was. It was 2006. So I don't. I, so 16 yeah. years ago. Okay. So 55, 54, 55. Or yeah. So. Okay. Um, because in Dr. Mm-hmm. Bickman's book, why we get sick and Dr. Fung both talk about it. Insulin resistance spawns, as you know, yeah. because what feeds cancer, sugar, yeah. insulin and all these things. So um, w- what was your treatment like? Oh, just, um, I did, they had suggested I do chemo because I had some a factor called HER2 new. Uh, mine was caught very okay. early with a mammogram. Good. Get a mammogram. And um, those diagnostic tools are good. It, uh, and they did a lumpectomy. And then I had um, the, the five-day intensive radiation because I was mm-hmm. a busy person. And, you know, 
<laughs> so I didn't didn't wow. want to go for six weeks. I just went twice a day, five days, boom. Wow. So yeah. And knocked it out. Knocked it out. Yeah. Um okay. I'm just trying to do the math here. Yeah. That um it's like a drive through. You like had drive through chemo or radiation. You were like five days. Well, that's all that's all and the time then I I'm had giving you. Mara, which is the one that takes away all of your hormones for five yeah. years. Um and that didn't seem to have a big negative effect on me at all. So that's that amazing. was five years and then I was done and I haven't had any revisitation. So that's good. Yeah. And I, I would assume because I, I, I assume your fasting insulin is low. That mm-hmm. also, you know, has, like I said, the predictability with it in spawning cancers and type two diabetes. That's and great and to put high that blood out pressure there. And, yeah. 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 And that's all done. Um, Dr. Bickman is a metabolic researcher from Brigham Young University. Mm. And so he and Dr. Fung work together and do a lot of uh, forums and programs nice. and a lot of things together, the medical side and then the um, metabolic and research side. It sounds like side. you have so a then, group that you convene that talks about these things too. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And I run my mouth a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I'm, 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 a, you know, they've paid to me do. to talk yeah. for a long time. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's a great that's right. thing. So, <laughs> I used to be on the radio and when I was on the radio, I would hold court and go, okay, people listen up. I, we're going to talk about fasting. <laughs> Even though we were supposed to be playing the next Cindy Lauper song, I was oh, talking about great. fasting. Or, <laughs> it's just, and I'm a longtime journalist, so I've had the ability to put my thoughts on I think it's wonderful and, that you do that. And post I it. Do. And, and well, again, it's, it's how you're saying it. If someone were to tell me good news and I didn't share it, you would look at me if you didn't know the good news and go, why didn't you tell me? That's that's what I don't want to have the burden of people saying, why didn't you tell me there was an answer for my um, PCOS and my type two diabetes and all the, why why didn't you share it? And so that uh, that's how I feel obligated is I would want to know. And someone did tell me it was, I've told the story. My son came home and told me about it, but it was an engineering student. You know, they're nerds who like to study yeah. deep dive into things. And so he was doing a deep dive into what fasting does to the human body and explained it to me that way. And I went, wow, that is fascinating. And, and he's also, he was 20 years old when he told me or 21, he was into keto keto diets that's not necessary that's not the best fit for me mm-hmm. but i did then i could understand because every day you fast you get into ketosis mm-hmm. you, you know even if you had a baked right, potato right. the day before yeah. so so i understood that and then understanding what autophagy does yes which you know is the big uh so and i didn't know how then, to pronounce it you, until you just said it <laughs> i oh, used to call it now, autophagy Dr. <laughs> Well, actually, the Greek that I think Dr. Fung even says that if you break it down, the Greek, it is auto and the French say phagi. It means self-cleaning. Ah. But in in the U.S., the because we uh, use different emphasis on our syllables, we say autophagy. Oh, OK. But OK, whatever it is, it's work for you and for you. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It How doesn't, long have that's you done right. it? it doesn't. I started November 24th, 2017. Oh, wow. Um, Okay. It was, it was, it was the day after Thanksgiving when my son came in and said, Hey, have you heard about this? Good day to start. I just (laughs) ripped. Yeah, it was, that's right. We were full from eating. (laughs) So he just told me it was 630. Don't eat again until tomorrow at 1230. I didn't know there was any other schedule. So I just started at 18 and six and I lost the 10 pounds I needed in a month, but I freed my brain from diet brain and I lowered my thyroid medication nice. and I have another, I have a rare swallowing or motility disorder that I had the best case they've ever seen because of fasting, because my GI doc says you were never designed to digest all day. Never. <laughs> yeah. Which is, and so it's a lot of work, which is, that's right. <laughs> that's right. It's a lot of work and we need time to mm-hmm. rest and digest. And so that's just how I started. And and I was on the radio at the time. And I, I remember being a little reticent and not mentioning it on the radio because I talked about like uh, diets where I'd done them for the radio station to lose right. those 10 pounds, but I would gain them back. So I felt a little disingenuous at first going, well, what about that <sighs> HCG diet, which I thought was magical. It just, you cannot sustain it because now I understand the science. And so it was about a month or so into it that on the radio one day, I just said, well, I've been doing this thing called intermittent fasting. And I'd gotten Dr. Fung's book. 
I, I'd gotten the obesity code, but it was so sciencey. Yes. That I, I, I got the paper back or I got it from the library and I had to like send it back. I was like, it's too much. Then I got the audible version where I could kind of listen and digest it and not see. Cause he does chemical diagrams and some things. I was like, okay, that's too much. That was overload yeah. for my little, my little ADD brain. So I just <laughs> said, tell it to me. And so once he told it to me and I read Jen Stevens book, delayed, yes. that first book was delayed. Don't deny Okay. And then it just clicked. Mm -hmm. And I've never looked back. And I I don't have to, I've said before, I don't have to worry about the new season, my clothes not fitting that fit the season before. You know, wonder. I've read her. Thanks for listening to the Lisa Fisher Said podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe and download all the episodes and leave a review, won't you? The Lisa Fisher Said podcast is produced by ClantonCreative.com.